I'm now at the beginning stage of reassembling the hardtop. I guess reupholstering is the correct term. And here I have the, uh, the eighth inch closed cell foam. It's not glued in yet. What I wanted to do is fit these uh, fiberboard pieces first. And this is how they fit. There's about a quarter inch gap between the uh, side piece and the front piece and about the same in the rear. The front piece is uh, pretty much flush edge to edge with the fiberglass here and there's probably close to an inch on either side there. Now what I've done here is I've put this in loosely so that uh, it'll be easier for me to glue it down. I will leave this header piece in place and then take these uh, three other strips off. Fold the, the foam backwards and spray adhesive on both surfaces and then very gently put it back. That way I should be able to get a bubble free and wrinkle free application. So here I'm taking off the, uh, the board pieces. You can see here. This is uh, just ordinary 8th inch thick fiber board. And it's uh, molded itself nicely to the hard top. In order to screw it in place, um, you have to countersink very carefully before you put the screws in. The screws are uh, a number, I guess they're number eight, half inch. These happen to be uh, Robertson Drive. They're available here in Canada, but uh, you don't have to get Robertson Drive, obviously. Originally, the uh, these board pieces were not only screwed in place, but they were also tacked in place. I'm not going to do that. This is a very stiff as it is. I don't think I'm going to need to put the tacks in. I've got the, uh, the foam hinged at the back there using masking tape. And the plan is to uh, fold it over the top at the back there, and then spray both sides with adhesive, and then use that hinged area to accurately relocate the the foam piece uh, in the middle of the hard top. And here I have applied the spray adhesive to the uh, inside of the hard top as well as to the foam pad. I'm going to let it sit for about five minutes. And I'll start by tucking in this corner and then the other corner and then laying it down very gently from the middle and working it toward the edge. This is the stuff I'm using. It's uh, Jeff Bond 99. I'll need a, probably a couple of cans of this stuff to do the job. It's uh, specially formulated for gluing in headliners and it's uh, heat resistant as well. And there's the underlay glued in place securely. What you do after applying the glue to both sides, both surfaces to be joined is you need a roller like this one to uh, make sure you get a really good purchase between the two surfaces. This is also the same to use when you uh, glue the vinyl to the underlay. So this is the hard part done. This is the center section that's been put in place. It's pretty much a two-person job to make sure you get uh, minimal wrinkling, if at all. What I've done here is I've put the, the hardboard pieces in place just to make sure I've got everything where it needs to be. As you see, there's a little bit here that has to be covered up with a separate piece of vinyl. This is a fairly close approximation of the original vinyl. Oops, got a little bit of stuff on it. There we go. It's a good fit. Now on to uh, recovering the, uh, the hardboard pieces. So these are the original remaining five pieces that need to be installed. 
And the sequence is the uh, this panel above the rear window goes on first, and then the uh, side panels. These here, followed by the uh, the header panel. There are bits of additional vinyl that go in those pockets before the header panel goes in. And finally, the last piece to go is that uh, that piece at the back, that thin strip that's uh, below the window. This is the second stage of the headliner installation, which is this panel that's just above the rear window. And I'm installing it the same way it went in originally. This is the original piece of vinyl here. You can see where it was actually stapled to the hardboard on this front edge here. So what it was was wrapped around like this and stapled to the hardboard. This is the uh, original material as a fairly thin I guess it's called the Dunlop Pillow Closed Cell Foam. It's quite a bit softer than the stuff that I have, which is a polyethylene foam from the upholstery shop. And uh, what I've done in order to reduce the thickness is to actually strip off the, the, uh, uh, the new closed cell foam at this point here before turning it over. And instead of stapling, I used the uh, high-tack contact cement to get the effect. Now you'll notice that this uh, foam was glued only to the, uh, the vinyl itself. It wasn't glued to the actual hardboard. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to be putting contact cement along this edge and on uh, the edge of the vinyl here, twitching it over and pulling it down to hold it tight to get a nice fit. The same will apply to the side pieces and the header piece. Originally when these hard tops were assembled, the upholsters used uh, number six half inch screws like these and a bunch of upholstery tacks between them. Instead what I'm doing here is using nothing but screws. I'm now adding extras between the ones I already have for the dry fit to make sure we have a good secure uh, attachment to the hard top. I'm drilling these holes with uh, 330 second inch uh, drill bits. It goes through the inside layer of the fiberglass. It doesn't go through of course. And then you use a tapering bit like this in the hole to indent the uh, hardboard before putting the number six screws in. I'm just getting ready to glue this now. You want this the edge of the closed cell foam to correspond with the edge of the fiberglass here so that when you put the rear seal in place this uh, flange isn't too thick. So here you see I've actually trimmed it down using a scraper like this to scrape off the foam where it was slightly too uh, too much overlap. And now I'm going to use some some contact cement, heavy duty contact cement to, to glue that edge in place and not gluing this foam to the hardboard, which was the original configuration. Here I'm fitting this uh, side piece. This is the next piece to go on. And uh, I've cut this section uh, oversized, just to give me a little bit of extra room. What I've got here, I've got it positioned with um, clothes pegs. I know I have enough room to overlap and I can trim it as I go along. So I'm going to mark it. Pulling the vinyl down, I'll mark the edge of that and that'll be where I'll be positioning the hardboard piece so that it fits perfectly. And now I know I'm going to have enough room here to work with the material. This is the new piece on the right hand side of the hard top inside of course and it's uh, laying on top of the old piece. You can see how this piece was constructed. 
This is the uh, eighth inch thick Dunlop pillow foam and it's glued directly to the to the vinyl on the inside. And you can tell that this is where it was glued to the fiberglass in the hard top. Right here, all along here. This is all glued all along this edge. But this middle part here, here, this part here was not glued. So what I have to do is make a template of this. And what I want to do is eliminate the overlap here because it's too thick with the, uh, the new closed cell foam that I have. So I'll just make it just slightly larger so it goes over the edge and gives me a nice rounded type of uh, transition. But it won't be so thick. And of course I'll be gluing it in place instead of stapling it in place as it was originally. And here we have the foam template cut out. It follows the original foam where it was with the exception of this edge here which I don't want foam to be on as I fold it over the, the board piece. And there are the two foam pieces for the side panels traced out on the closed cell foam. There's the foam glued onto the, uh, onto the inside of the vinyl nice and securely. Now I'm going to be gluing this uh, board, fiber board piece, onto the edge here like this. As you can see I've left just a little bit of a lip, a little bit of a lip there to wrap around the uh, board, eighth of an inch, and that will, uh, that will give me a nice transition as I wrap this around. So I'm going to be putting contact cement on this edge and on this edge waiting for it to set up and then folding it over and then this panel will be ready for installation onto the hard top. Making good progress at this point. The side panels are uh, fitted in place not by glue yet. They're screwed through the, the panel here. This folds right over. It's like this panel. This is the uh, header panel. You definitely don't want to glue the foam to the board. You want to glue the foam only to the vinyl. At no time do you glue it to the board. Anyway, so this is loosely in place. The, uh, that's the longest piece in the entire assembly. And uh, it goes on after the top and after that back piece goes on. Because when you uh, get around to finishing this area, you want to be able to fold over the vinyl thing here and glue it so you get a nice rounded edge there. I'm now at the stage of fitting the side panels after having established the, the rear panel here in place and the long long strip at the very back. What you want to do here is uh, you want the foam to just wrap around this contour here and leave that part that glues to the hard top directly without foam. And what I have to do is, is trim it. As you see that line there, trim the foam so that it, uh, it achieves that particular effect. And the way I do that is uh, very carefully take a sharp razor blade and scribe along the line. Not all the way through, obviously, because you don't want to cut the vinyl. And then finish off with a scraper and you scrape it off the, the vinyl to give you a nice clean contour. And there's the piece removed. So that when I position this against the hard top, it falls in very nicely and 
place. Now what we're doing here is we're taking a flat panel, this here, vinyl and foam panel, and making it conform to a three-dimensional shape. So there's going to be some tension in the vinyl right here as it's pressed in, as it's forced into this bigger arch. And it requires that the foam is glued as well as this lip against there before it's trimmed. Originally, when these hardtops were upholstered, in addition to screws, the uh, upholsterer used tacks like this, hammering through the, uh, the hardboard. Um, this was because the hardboard wasn't quite as rigid as what I've used here, and it, they did that to maintain the shape. I'm not going to use any tacks here, but there is only, there are only two places where a tack has to be used, and uh, that's here. This is where the uh, originally pulled this cover tightly there as they glued it, and put a tack in there to hold the tension. This is to uh, add just a little bit of flexibility in this vinyl for when it glues to this, uh, this panel here. So it maintains its shape and the glue line has a minimal amount of tension applied to it because the tack is holding the, uh, the panel in place. So there's a sequence involved. There are actually three different glue lines for putting in the side panels. There's this one here, which glues to the, uh, the channel for the cat rail seals. There's this one, which uh, conforms to the, uh, the base of the hard top. And then there's this glue line across here. Uh, this is the first one I'm going to do, followed by this one here. And then I'll finish off by gluing this one. I'll be using high strength contact cement for the job to make sure that I get no delamination later on as the, the hard top is, is used and ages. This is the technique for trimming the, the vinyl. I've taken a very sharp razor and very carefully just scribed, not as far as the vinyl, and then used a scraper to pull it away like this. Being careful, of course, not to damage the vinyl, but it works rather well. You also want the foam on this panel to coincide with this line in the hard top and leave this area without any foam at all on which to glue the, uh, the vinyl. And you can see where I've made a rather crude line here where I'm going to be scribing the foam and then scraping it off so that it's a good fit with this particular contour. This is the glue up. I've applied glue to the, the vinyl piece and the foam within about inch, inch and a half corresponding glue on the hard top itself. I'm waiting the requisite half an hour for the contact cement to lose its tack, after which I'll be very carefully starting at this back side here, pressing it into place and uh, making sure I get no wrinkles in the situation as I go along. Coming to the end of the headliner install, the uh, side panels are in place. I've also put the rear seal in. The rear seal is held in place with a couple of screws, finishing screws and finishing washers. You can see over here where I have uh, doubled over the vinyl to give it a nice clean finish. 
over here you can see the, uh, the tack which I have color coded to match the top. This holds this uh, firmly in place, it gives you a nice tight arrangement over here. What's really kind of important is where you have the, the foam. The foam should end just at the uh, end of the contour here and no foam here where the seal goes. Same goes for, there's no foam here at all. Same goes for over here. You want to make sure that foam does not overlap. The foam also ends right over here. There's no foam at all under here. It's just glued straight to the hard top. The same applies for the uh, the channels here. You want to have about a centimeter free of foam along this edge so that uh, when you put your chrome trim on and afterwards put your, uh, your cant reel seal on there that it sits flush. I'm at the uh, very end of the process here. As you see I've uh, got this screwed in place. And it's the same sort of thing. You want the foam to end right there at that rip and wrap it around the glue. This here is a little tricky. What you need to do is uh, fold this over and you have just enough room to get a screwdriver in there to put that last screw in place. Those are half inch number six tapered head screws to use throughout. So that's the last thing to do. I'm going to glue that up and then start installing the uh, cant rail chrome followed by the, uh, the rest of the chrome in the car. Or in the hard top, that is. I'm going to install the cant rail chrome. Chrome. Boop, boop, boop. Going to install the cant rail chrome after this. And followed by the, um, the seals. Big job after this is putting that back window in place and putting the, uh, the chrome in around it. It's a little tricky. Here we are. So at this stage I'm uh, gluing on the cat rail seals. This is the uh, seal that's sold by most of the usuals for this application. It's not a perfect seal. This is the uh, seal that's used for the convertible top. But it's got this uh, area here. You can see where this lip folds down. And it's impossible to glue on a flat surface like this um, with this chrome here. So what I've done is I've installed a thin strip of uh, automotive heavy closed cell foam. This is about a centimeter wide and uh, 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. And this allows the, uh, the seal, this cat rail seal, to, to glue on this side here as well as onto there. And it avoids the the screws that are used to attach the chrome to the hard top so it, it'll sit flat and there's no really no other way to uh, to do this unless there's a different kind of seal available which i haven't been able to find so that's the next step i'm using a heavy duty black weather strip adhesive by 3m that's this stuff here and it works really really well uh, these pads are uh, they're very well glued on to the hard top here. So it's, uh, it's good stuff. It's Saturday, October the 8th, 2021. What did I do with my E-Type today is I finished the uh, reupholstering of my hard top, a new headliner. And I've got the uh, chrome installed and the seals installed. And what remains to be done is to uh, put that back window in, which is a bit of a challenge, but not so much of a challenge as it is to put the chrome on afterwards. It's uh, it's going to be a it's going to be a chore. 
I've done it a couple of times and it doesn't go on easily. But this is the hard top. The new seals in place and the new headliner. It's very similar to the original. Not quite perfect, but pretty darn close. This stuff came from SMS Auto Fabrics out in the West Coast, the Pacific Northwest of the U.S. 85 bucks a yard, you need two. It took them five months. They're custom made. They did a really nice color match. Perfect color match. I sent them a piece of my original headliner. And this took me four days to get this done. And I'll take a picture of it on the car once I got it done, but everything fits pretty well. I got everything re-chromed. That's what I did today. Saturday, October the 8th, 2021. To my E-Type.